Welcome to the Harper Tech Academy. Today in our sources series, we're actually going to learn how to make Cumberland sauce. First of all, you're probably wondering, you may have heard of Cumberland sauce before. It can be used with a whole range of different white meats, chicken, turkey, um, but also you can actually use it with game meats like venison. Um, it's a really versatile sauce, really easy to pull together and that's what we're going to do today. Remember that we also have in the um, comments there, we have the recipe there for you. All right, so let's have a look at our ingredients. So we're actually going to be utilizing orange and lemons. Um, normally we'd have red currant um, jelly, but I can't get it. So alternative here is just some cranberry jelly, hot English mustard, um, port wine, and Worcestershire sauce. Just um, for interest's sake, um, Cumberland was actually invented uh, in the 1800s by the um, Duke of Cumberland, who was a brother of George IV. So this is where it's come from. So the first part we're going to do in the recipe, it says quarter, I'm making a little bit more than that, is we've got a microplane. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take some of the zest off the orange and the lemon. Now keep in mind when I talk zest, it's the orange or green or, or uh, yellow of the citrus, but not the white. Okay, that's super important. We're just going to grate that in and get that going. So because this is so fine, you can do a bit more it adds a really beautiful little zestiness to the dish for the sauce. Okay, so I'll just keep going. Now, traditionally you use a zester. This is a little bit finer, a bit nicer. So I'm gonna put a bit of lemon in there and I'm already starting to get those beautiful zestiness coming from um, the citrus that we're gonna put in this. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to blanch it. So what I have over here is a um, pot and we're actually going to blanch it. Now in the recipe, if you're using a zester, you do it twice. We're just going to do it once. So we're going to blanch that and then refresh it. We literally then put it under the tap, cool it off. And I'm just going to tap this in too. So we've got some of that blanched zest there ready to go. And I'm actually going to utilize that. I'm just gonna put that on top. Now, the next part of the preparation is the finely chopped onions. Um, there is actually a video on the Harper Tech Academy on how to finely chop your onions really well, but it's super important that it is really um, fine for this dish. Now the next thing we're going to get some orange and some lemon. So we'll just get a container. So I've cut that in half. So we're just going to juice up a bit of lemon and you can put it in the same container. I'm also going to cut my orange in half. You want that flavor and look how juicy and beautiful that orange is. Lots of juice coming off that. Okay, now that we have all of our ingredients ready, we're gonna to move to the stove and start. So basically, we're gonna start the stove. And in the recipe, it sort of says blanch the onions. What we're going to do is actually um, saute. So we're gonna just saute very lightly. So saute actually means to Uh, to, to cook without color. Now what a lot of people don't realize is onions have a lot of sugar in there. So we're gonna bring it to a, a medium heat. That's really important. And just listen to when this goes in, just listen. Hear that light sizzle, light. It's not, if it's too hot, it's just gonna burn straight away. And we don't want that. So 
This is a really important part of the dish is actually cooking our onions out, getting that caramelization happening is really going to make such a difference. All right, so as we move, yeah, it's always an important thing when you're cooking in the kitchen, just a little chef trick. So you've got your um, tea towel, hold it underneath and when you hold that pot so I can hold like this it keeps my hand from getting burnt which is always very important all right so we're just going to saute that some really good smells already starting to happen at this point I'm actually going to get my zest and I'm going to put that in as best as I can oh. That smell is just amazing. So tapping that in, um, and we're actually going to saute with that in there, and that's just going to add some really great um, uh, acidity in our sauce. So if you're having a look there, I'm just going to tip that up so you can see. It's starting to get clear. So what we want is for it to actually get translucent. All right. And that will take probably another 30 seconds to get there. That's about ready. So what we're going to do is, if it's red currant jelly, there's about 100 grams. I've got my cranberry. So I'm putting cranberry in, but um, traditionally it is red currant. And as said before, I couldn't actually get red currant. So we've got this. All right. So. That goes in first. So what we want to do is actually melt this jelly through with the onions. So I'll just break that down a little bit. So remember, we're very high in sugar in this sauce. It's super important we don't burn it. Okay, so the next I'm going to help that is by putting the orange and the lemon juice in there. That's looking pretty yum already, isn't it? I could see that being the absolute winning sauce um, going on your Christmas turkey or a bit of venison. You know, you could actually even um, bake it in this type of sauce. We're just going to melt that over. Okay, next. So we haven't really talked about port. Port is actually a fortified red wine. It's a bit sweeter than your normal, say, Cabernet Sauvignon or red wine. This is a really important part, adds a real um, depth of flavour. So you'll start to notice here that it's just starting to tick over. So we're getting those bubbles going. And we're going to throw some port in there. And that's really going to add some awesome flavour. So at this point, I'm actually going to bring this to the boil. And I'm going to add some hot English mustard. All right, gives it a little bit of bite. A good spoonful in there. Now for this sauce we're going to cook this out for about 10 minutes but as I said before be very very careful that you don't let it cook out too much because this will burn on the side so use a heavy base pot will be probably the best thing to do. I'm going to just break that mustard up and another, if you're English or from a country um, that's been influenced by England, Worcestershire sauce. And we're going to put a, a little knob of that. My dad actually comes from the Worcester um, Shire of England. So this brings back a lot of childhood memories for me. So you'll see here it's actually starting to come to the boil. Once it hits a boil and we've got everything melted, all that um, mustard has actually come into the sauce. We're going to drop it to a slow simmer and let that go for a couple of minutes. Okay, so that's been simmering for about five minutes. And I'll just show you if you come back down here. So you'll see the finished product there and I give you Cumberland sauce. So I hope you enjoyed that. 
um, let us know in the comments how you actually use the Cumberland sauce. Um, and if you like these videos, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time at the Harper Tech Academy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos from the Harper Tech Academy, make sure you subscribe on the video. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.